whether it works or not you're in kind of an unhappy spot okay stompy seems stompy is pretty good for us it's one of the matchups that i actually do want to face so we started off with two bad, ma bad matchups got there now we got some good matchups though stompy on the play is always still scary they can go wide on the board and just overrun you especially if you have kind of a dirty hand with a bunch of cycling artifacts instead of a hand very focused on creature removal yeah something like this huh yeah it's probably just a mulligan i mean it's like four land three spells but none of these spells actually do anything i'm just going to die to like little sentinel if i keep this hand i mean i guess this one cycles but still on the play I might keep this, I think on the draw I want to mull and yeah that's already a little bit better probably bottom this and look for a cycling artifact I don't really want to be bouncing my lands for Glintalk, I want to be bouncing Prophetic Prisms to gain an advantage hmm. interesting so either a bolt now probably bolt now Hmm. Or actually, eh. like Bolt now plays around Hunger of the Hulk Pack, Vines of the Vast Foot, and but not building also potentially opens me up to protecting myself against Rancor, as well as keeping the Bolt for a while to protect myself against Elephant Guide. Hmm. Probably worth it to board now though, because I don't really want to allow them to attack and then play a Skargen Pitskog or whatever it's called post combat. So I'll just deal with their first creature and then hopefully that buys me some time. Yeah, if they're on one land, Quirin Ranger reset, that has to be pretty decent for me. Makes it more difficult for them to get up to two drops. Uh, even though they are a monocolor deck, Prismatic Strange is actually not that great against them. Because, like, fogging them for a turn when they're. Like, their deck is all creatures. They will present you with a lethal attack on one turn, and then you fog for a turn, and then they still have lethal on the board. They're not really throwing any resources away by getting fogged. <laughs> getting fogged. Uh, like, Prismatic Strange preventing their attack doesn't really set them back in any way. So, like, it's decent once you have the Monarch, but it doesn't offer a huge advantage. I think I want to be able to Glint Hawk, Alchemist's Vial, and cast a 1-drop on the next turn, so I need to get up to 4. The deck you made. Let me check. Oh. Uh... Yeah, that does look like a very good build of Good Rock Monster. This World Shaper is new, and I guess he's a very sweet new addition. What is Mazirek Crawl Death Priest? I've never seen this card before. Sacrifice another permanent. Put a plus one, plus one on each creature you control. And that's pretty sweet. It's a black green flying creature. That's the meme of the day, right? Bl flying creatures should be black and green, though this one doesn't have vigilance. Yeah, that looks like a pretty strong build, but I could see how it's not that fun for your opponent or you to play with. Uh, 14-24. I don't know, 24 is a good answer to things, right? Uh, I should hide this text and there we go. Because now we're in the round, we're not between rounds. Exactly, Agri Sloth knows. Agri Sloth? Angry? Angry Sloth. God damn it. Don't torture my tongue with difficult names like this. Um, so, I do want to run out Clintalk. I want to. Well, I guess I can Prophetic Prism first. That's just better than replaying the Alchemist Vow. And that opened up uh, my mana flexibility a lot more to be able to both cast Thraben Inspector and Lightning Bolt. Though I guess I found neither. <laughs> 
so that kind of becomes a moot point and I guess definitely want to be bouncing huh. so I can either develop more mana for next turn or I can stop the attack for four this turn hmm. I think I want to be buying myself some time but I also set myself back further away from uh, from Metalcraft. But I guess so. I want to cast Prismatic Strands next turn, probably. Yeah, it's pretty close. 42. 24. No, obviously not 24. Yeah, what am I saying? 14 out of... No, 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 no. Not 24. Okay, sure. Do I think I can do a 24 hour stream? Uh, I don't know, I've never done one yet. I probably can, but it's probably going to be pretty difficult. Okay, no attacks that I like to see. Okay, untapped land also helps, then I kind of get the best of both worlds okay yeah I like my my chances now I like realms realms which one is realms <laughs> oh realms uncharted yeah, yeah, yeah heard you like gifts are given <laughs> I mean, it's very good with Gitrock Monster. Without Gitrock Monster in the board, Realms Uncharted is pretty awful. Reprocessed or Spanish Reclamation, yeah. Uh, 24, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, Matrix Disc. So, basically, you just built a EDH deck for Matrix Disc. Like, you are not enjoying it yourself, but Matrix Disc is so in. He's going to be playing this. You just converted him to the Git Rock Monster. <laughs> All hail the Hypnotoad. Yeah, exactly. Like it's that's why all these discard outlets are in the deck also, like the whatever the Scourge is called. Um, Scourge Familiar. You can discard lands to add black mana and then you draw cards from the discarded lands. And you can like go through your entire deck with like dredging, um, dredging Duckmore Salvage and all that stuff. So that just goes infinite. Is there an Eldrazi in here to reshuffle? Yeah. So with Scourge Familiar and Duckmore Salvage, you can just go infinite. You discard the Duckmore Salvage, then dredge it back to your hand. You make infinite black mana and cycle through your entire deck. Then you draw your entire deck and have infinite mana. So. <laughs> Cost a 25 minute turn. Yeah, that does sound pretty sick. Wait, is there no kind of timer or something on your on your commander games? What kind of time limit do you play with? Or is was this in paper? Yeah, I guess in paper you never have timers. 60 minute timer, okay, that's quite uh, forgiving. I can see that leading to some pretty grindy slow games so yeah I agree the deck looks sweet but I can also see why people would not enjoy it too much from either side of the table man electric here would be the nuts here though like trading my prismatic strengths for my opponents Nettle Sentinel or another pump spell while also taking zero damage for that is also pretty close to the nuts. This is a good prismatic strength. Green. Uh, that does allow them to put the Rancor on their second Solana Ledge Walker though, but I can still block and flashback prismatic strength to kill one of these while also not taking any damage. Ooh! I don't like seeing that, now I'm in trouble. 
Well, the prismatic strands allow me to stall against that for a little bit, but I need to start getting some advantage going, start making some headway. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here playing defense the entire game. I need to find more creatures, more card advantage, something that helps me. Like, become the monarch would help me. Or, like, more flying creatures so that I can double block this girl. Because now I'm just, like, preventing combat damage, not gaining anything out of it. So it's much better to get this into the graveyard for me, but that gives my opponent full information. Probably still worth doing, because I can't really afford to spend the three mana in my next few turns if I want to top deck some cycling creatures, like Quartz Guy for sure, bounce this, replay it, that might eat up all my mana. So basically I need enough flying creatures to be able to put four power against this one. I should have just bolted this in my opponent's turn probably. Okay, that is pretty nice. Still doesn't guarantee me to be able to win, because I will be running out of prismatic strengths at some point. But it's definitely one of the better top decks. Get rid of this before they can do anything broken with it. Because it's like the only non-green creature in their deck, so... I don't want them to make this big, because then my prismatic strengths lose in value. Okay, and next turn I can go for the double block with my last strengths. Cycling lands with Crucible. Yeah, that is also sweet. Hmm. I might even take this hit, actually. So that I can set up the double block twice. No, actually I can't take the hit because then I lose Monarch. Yeah. The damage output is not actually that big of an issue yet. But like losing Monarch would just be a huge issue. So I think I just need my third prismatic strength or something, or more flying creatures. Because if they save this creature through the double block, I'm in pretty big trouble. Because there's no way to interact with the Rancors. Sure. I don't think I need Lightning Bolt on my opponent's turn, really. The Electricry already protects me against, like, Elephant Guide and Rancors on this other Ledge Walker. And I think I need to be Lightning Bolting my opponent's face at some point. Like, prevent damage for one more turn, then start going aggressive. King Pascal, yeah. The people are praising me as the monarch. I do enjoy that. But yeah, Pascal Menard is probably the superior Pascal Monarch. Hung off the hall back. Still have to prevent damage here, but that makes my next turn not that great. Because I'm still facing down like a lethal or close to lethal attacker here next turn, so I have to put some blockers in front of this. But I want to be killing my opponent instead of blocking. Wait. Oh, this only plus one plus one, okay. Best electric re ever if this resolves, or I get another pump spell out of their hand. Come on. Okay, binds of the Vastwood is fine though. Yeah, and then their attacker isn't going to be lethal next turn. Well, this game's going to be pretty close. Yes. Basically, it comes down to whether they. I guess. No, plus four is all they need, so I guess I want to still be blocking it. Or I try to find my third prismatic strands. Not much to ask for, right? Uh, also, some burn would have been useful. So that I can close out this game. I think I should still be fine here. 
I block this so I don't die and then they get bolted out. Maybe a graph. I should electricry? Yeah, I did electricry. That was pretty great. That, that was on fort, uh, 5 toughness with 4 damage marked on it still. So, hmm, do I need to double block or not? I think double blocking is probably free. I mean, it's not free, free, but let's see. So, Vines of the Westwood makes it 13 damage, so that I need to do at least one block to beat a single Vines. And then I guess the second block plays around mutagenic growth. Is there anything that can go wrong after that? They can play like another one of these girls so that they have a blocker and then they stabilize on one. Because I can like attack with these three, they block here with their Solana Ledge Walker and then I only hit them for four in the air down to four and then they go to one. Hmm, that's interesting. So I open myself up to Solana Ledge Walker, number three, but I play around Mutagenic Growth, but Mutagenic Growth is not even in all of the lists. <laughs> interesting spot. But I guess I'm drawing to so many extra burn spells also, so that even if they do end up having an extra Ledge Walker, I should be in a winning position most of the time with three extra draw steps. Like my natural draw step, a core sky fisher, and the monarch. No, I got, yeah, I'm taking back the monarch. I'm losing it this turn, but I'm taking it back with this attack. So this should still work out for me. And any other blocker, I can journey to nowhere away. Okay, this doesn't do anything. They're just dead. Okay, that was pretty tight game. Pretty scary these hexproof creatures that I cannot interact with, but the prismatic strands did a great job of stabilizing me. Nice. Yeah, I did have three draws to get a burn spell actually. Monarch, uh, Skyfisher and draw step, yeah. So what do we want? Once again, electric rays are kind of medium, but I think I'm bringing them in. Standard bearer is pretty great against all their pump spells, rancor, and elephant guide, so it interacts with all of the most scary cards. Well, except for ledge walkers, but these interact with ledge walkers and bolt scourges. And then, like, I'm never certain whether lone missionary is actually good or not. Like. If it trades for a 2-2 and buys me 4 life, then it's great. But it can also end up being too small when they go for like a Vault Scratch plus Elephant Guide or Ledge Walker Elephant Guide plan or something and just go big. Then you sit there with like a 2-1 having spent an entire card on something that doesn't exchange favorably for any of your opponent's cards. So it can be very hit or miss. If they go wide on the board and try to aggro you down then it's awful and if they go unfair and uninteractive then it ends up being great and same thing for these like they're good against elephant guide but they're pretty clunky i think i'm bringing them in though because they're also kind of a like a necrotol i guess a lurking chupacabra or whatever it's called nowadays against uh, vault scourge mm. So if I would be interested in these seven cards, maybe and these four are like kind of sketchy. Actually, these six are all kind of sketchy. And then the standard bar is the only slam dunk inclusion. What would I be interested in taking out though? I can definitely see cutting some or all of the palace sentinels. Yeah, but it does also destroy like elephant guide and I don't know. And it also, as a 3 dropout class, as many of their like Neto Sentinel type cards. So I think it's reasonable inclusion because it's both uh, a good creature on the board and a way to interact with some of their harder to interact with cards. Like the Vault Scourge isn't really the main point, but the Elephant Guide is. I think I still want Prismatic Strands. Though. Better Screech. How good is Better Screech? 
Probably better screech is just too clunky also. I have like two of these in the deck. And I don't know. Maybe cut all the glint talks. I'll try this, though I might end up being like too low on threats of my own, too low on counterplay. I'm trying to like fully out control them and that might backfire if they have something non-interactive, mostly Sliss Alana, not no, uh, Salana, Ledge Walker. Pretty weak against those if I don't electric read them right away. Sense once again pretty medium. Yeah, I think I'm gonna mulligan. Oh, once again. A few land drops and some cycling potential usually makes for a six card hand that you can and have to keep, but you're never really happy about it. This also seems too clunky. I think I want a lightning bolt or something to at least come back onto the board after cycling through this prophetic prism. Oh yeah, Galvanic Blast kind of the same thing. Though I'm kind of weak to my Ancient Den getting blown up by Gleeful Sabotage with this draw as well. Well, at least, no, like they didn't have a one drop and they didn't have a big board flood turn here with Burning Tree Emissary, so this is kind of as slow as an opposing draw can get. Hopefully they just sacrifice this and put like three counters on their nest invader here so that I can pick that off with Clarny. Same thing for Elephant Guide here. Yeah, okay. Well if they protect it then it's then I'm no longer a fan of that. Then I am no longer a fan. Vines of the Vast would, would destroy me here pretty hard. Is there any way to respect that? I can go for like Alchemist Vile to try to prevent the attack, but that just allows them to develop their board further while I'm not really catching up in any way. Yeah, I can burn the 2-2. Two, two. I'm not sure if they're ever saving that, but I guess I can try. Yeah, sure. Okay, they did not. But I think they would not protect it, even if they do have a vines. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, I'm just putting them to the test, but it's very likely they just vines it here. Need to make them have it though. Yeah, feels bad, man. Definitely in trouble here. Yeah. Well, I can buy myself some time with the alchemist well, but I need to keep making land drops here if I miss my land after cycling. Then I'm in trouble because then this prismatic strands. I mean, I can buy myself time with prismatic strands also, but once again, I'm not really making progress on the board while using fog to buy myself more time. And also just dead to the second vines of the west board, but that was going to be the case for quite a while. Best case, I like find a land here, damn it, and then course guy for sure this journey to nowhere back to my hand and then replay it. On my next turn, that was like the optimal. Wait, I sh uh, should have done this on their upkeep, but I don't think I'm really beating second vines regardless. Because then, yeah, this journey currently doesn't have anything under it, so bouncing it is kind of a free roll. I guess it's t time for prismatic strands. Come down in the next turn. I have the possibility of either slamming Palace Sentinels or Thraim Inspector. Because next turn the Prismatic Strength flashback is free. They're kind of flooding out though, so that gives me some hope. But it's still very possible they have more protection spells in their hand. 
Come on, land. No. Well, that is something that I can play. But I would much prefer to... I think I'm cycling this first and then I can still... Well, no, actually... If I play these two, I can like block here and prismatic strands, then at least I'm eating a creature in the process. But I'm missing my land drops even further. It's pretty close between cycling right away and then if I draw an untapped land, I can lone missionary plus prophetic prism in the opposite order, of course. If I don't draw an untapped land, I can still Thraben Inspector. Close call. Yeah, I think I'm going with that. I need to make some progress here, especially because I have a bunch of tapped lands in my deck where drawing them this turn instead of next turn is going to be a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if I draw Bounce Land this turn, it makes such a huge difference getting it on the board and having 5 mana available to me next turn. And Untapped Land still makes me go with pretty much an optimal line of play from here. Yeah, definitely higher upside. Definitely still in trouble here, though. I can try going to 1, actually. Uh, that might be worth it. Yeah, it's probably worth it. Just block here. And then they need to cast a pump spell to make me use my prismatic strands. Otherwise, I just go to one. I think I need the prismatic strands for next turn. What? How am I really getting back onto the board if I strands this turn? <laughs> There's the bounce land. God damn it, deck. Well, it's better drawing it now than never drawing it, but still in quite a bit of trouble. But yeah, having prismatic strands this turn actually works out super great for me. Because I can eat one of their creatures. I guess they're just always attacking with only nest invaders and not sending their two power creatures in as well. Yeah, I guess that doesn't make any difference. But I did need it this turn, otherwise I would just die without having access to a fog. I think going down to one was important. I can electric read the scion, that is true. If they put elephant guide on the scion, I'm going to. Otherwise I don't see myself making that play. The Scion is the only creature that doesn't get stopped by Prismatic Strands, so there's actually some... <laughs> okay, well, Goblin Master, in a streak of correct predictions, correctly predicting me electric reading the Scion. So I think I want to hold on to my Missionary here. Solid reads, yes, definitely. Your reads are on point today. Okay, let's prevent this damage. Yeah, they are rightfully not making an attack into my lone missionary if there are other creatures because they know they're just going to throw them away for nothing. And this already forces me to flashback strands. Okay, I guess time for another Journey to Nowhere attempt. Though... I'm still dying to any... Any pump spell here. Because they just make this bigger and then kill me with the Rancor. So... I should have tapped differently, but I guess it doesn't make too big of a difference. I'm just going to sack this clue to keep myself alive, I think. 
because they can rancor this up and then it's going to hit me for four unblockable anyway so i think i want to respond to the rancor and try to kill it <laughs> yeah it did win a one-way ticket to nowhere no vines for gucci still not very gucci i'm still dying to like epic confrontation hunger of the hall pack second grand car elephant guide Taking this clue to look for lightning bolt or galvanic blast, but <laughs> not gonna attempt to read that out. Matrix, you have to imagine the the melody in your head. Oh. Not really sure what could even be in my opponent's hand if they're not just slamming this and killing me here. <laughs> so Rancor, Rancor this dude, that's Clue. Come on Lightning Bolt, not bad, not bad. Uh, let's see. So now it's kind of close actually. I did have red open. Like I can try to counter the Rancor so that I get rid of it forever. But then I'm instantly dead to a pump spell. Well, not to hunger of the whole pack actually, but I'm instantly dead to vines of the West. They didn't have vines last turn. So hunger of the whole pack makes a difference, mutagenic growth. Or I can try to get the pump spell out of their hand so that they committed and then I still run out the bolt afterwards. Huh. But beating the Rancor in the long run is going to be very difficult. Okay, I think I'm going to let them put me to one once again. Come on. God, <laughs> no. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. It's pretty annoying. If I bolt here now, I get to keep my missionary, go to one. Or I bolt this pit skull, go to two. But I don't have a missionary. No, they don't have to commit pump because they have lethal on the board now. Oh yeah, I mean you mean before the epic confrontation. Sure. Um, yeah, I think I have to still kill the Pitscock. Uh, Bolt wouldn't have worked. This is a sorcery. So Bolt in response might have worked. Oh no, Bolt in response I would... No, no. My Bolt in response would have worked for me, so... Because uh, the Rancor doesn't come back. Now the Rancor comes back, so I had to wait on the Bolt so that they don't just re-equip this and hit me for 5. Yeah, no problem, but yeah, the fight spell is a sorcery, funnily enough. River Boa. Well, now the Rancor in hand is quite the problem. I need like another removal spell, so then my Pelicentos plus removal spell is good enough. Mm, that puts me to one, sure. Like I bounce Journey. And then replay it, and then I go to one. After blocking. So I'm stabilized here if they don't top deck anything. But any additional creature and any addition, like pump spells just kill me, and additional creatures are going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Because they get Rancor back after trading here. If they want to trade, and if they don't, they can just sit on the... Nettle Sentinel also. Yeah, that was kind of a clutch draw there. <sighs> Pretty close game. Uh, it is a butt clenching match for sure. Come on. Okay, go to one. It's only the second time I've been on one this game. Can't really get much worse. Oh, fuck. No. Okay, this one 
it's actually like one of the worst creatures for me because I cannot block it. So I need another removal spell here. Come on. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. That might work. I'm at five. I only go to one for the third time in a row. Mm, Palace Sentinels, I draw a card. They draw a card at the end of their turn though. It's probably worth it for both of us to draw an extra card so I can find an answer to this, otherwise I just die to it. Uh, Kicker to kill Rancor, it still goes to their hand. So they just replay it. That doesn't really help me. Yeah, Vineman 1. You become the monarch. Rancor just comes back to their hand, even if it gets destroyed by by Sanctifier. So that so I need some prismatic strands here. Or okay, that helps, that helps. Well, does it? Uh I mean it helps a little, but I still need to worry about the Rancor. So I need to keep this back, I guess. Otherwise I don't have enough toughness for the Rancor coming back. Okay, and if they trade, then I'm kind of stabilized, but they get the extra card. Ah, damn, I should have done this before damage, though. This was awful. Okay, not punish, because then they can hunger off the hard pack for three counters. If I do it before damage, they couldn't have. Uh, keep this in hand or play it. Vault Scourge is the reason to keep it. Play it is like another attacker. I think I'm playing it actually. Well, it's kind of close. If I die to Vault Scourge here, I'll be pretty sad. I couldn't afford to attack with both because then if they don't block, I'm dead on board. Oh no, no, I had to gain land. Damn, I could have attacked with both. That was dumb because I just go to one again and going to one is like where I'm most at home, right? Mm, yeah, maybe I should have done that actually. Probably should have done that. Damn, yeah, 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 probably destroying the Rancor was better. I was, I thought this was still unblockable, but with my two power creatures I could have blocked it still. Uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty close. Also, I'm like close to timing out because this was so so intense in so many spots. Sure. Well, they are going to run into my prismatic strands here. We might still be stabilizing, though they do get like a billion extra cards from this monarch because I never managed to get it back. What well, a game. Green. Come on. Okay, still alive, still alive. Yeah, I I mean, what is it? Like, time is an illusion, I think, was the darkest mage. Time comment. Okay, we get the monarch, finally. Okay, now we should be fine. There's still some scary cards that I can't really interact with. Mostly Solana, uh, less, less Solana, whatever they're called. The hexproof dude, hexproof girl. Okay, that's great though. This is great. I still have a prismatic strands to keep myself alive, and I'm the monarch, so looking great. Holy moly, this game! And they seem to be out of threats. So yeah, all the rankers are in the world. Solana, let's walk in that one. Stand with Vera. Finally, an answer to the. Rancor and they can't protect their Korean Ranger anymore with vines because they have to target my standard barrel with vines, so Yes. And now time shouldn't be an issue. I mean I normally need like two or three turns to finish them. This is game two, I think. Wait, no? 
Oh no, it's game three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. This is not correct. I think we're one and one. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I lost one game to like the Lissalana Huntmaster going way too big and me being unable to deal with it. No, wait. I won that game also with Prismatic Strands. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, I just have to focus on winning quickly here. So it should be winning position now. Because I still have prismatic strength back up and like standard wearer to make sure I don't die to any random pump shenanigans. Their rancors are disabled. This deals with both the hexproof and the flying creatures. Yeah, hexproof, sure. Though they aren't really all that relevant at the moment. I guess I'm still killing them especially for time reasons, and they don't have le as much of a board presence. Because as long as they can buff their creatures, it shouldn't be an issue. Yes! Uh, it was 2-0, actually. Holy shit, that was close.